Hebrews chapter 9. That's where we'll take our text. We'll begin our reading with verse number 19. It reads as this, For when Moses had spoken every precept to all the people according to the law, he took the blood of calves and of goats with water and scarlet wool and hyssop and sprinkled both the book and all the people saying, This is the blood of the testament which God hath enjoined or given unto you. Moreover, he sprinkled with the blood both the tabernacle and all the vessels of ministry. And almost all things are by the law purged with blood. And without shedding of blood is no remission. The last part of verse number 22, Without shedding of blood is no remission. I want to preach if the Lord help us this morning on this thought. The beauty of the blood. The beauty of the blood. If you will, stretch forth your hands this way and ask God to help us this morning. Father, I love you. I'm so thankful for your spirit that we've already been made to feel. Oh God, I'm thankful, Lord, that you are a chain breaker. God, it's not your will for us to live our life bound to the elements of flesh, the elements of sin, the elements of the world. But you've come to make us free. God, you've come to give us life and that life more abundantly. I'm asking now, oh God, that you'd move in our midst, that you would touch us now as we endeavor to preach the word of God. Father, that you would uh, uh, anoint us to preach, Lord. That this, as Jesus said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for He hath anointed me to preach uh, the gospel. I pray that that liberty would be here this morning. God, I pray that if there's anybody under the sound of my voice that has never experienced the blood of Jesus, if there's anyone here that has never had an encounter with you, uh, they've never had a face-to-face encounter with the life-changing blood of Christ, I pray, oh God, that this would be their morning, that we could leave all washed, uh, renewed, purified by the blood. Our lives can be forever changed. Father, we'll forever love you and give you the glory, the honor, and the praise for what you're going to do. In Jesus' name that we pray it. And the church says amen. Amen. And amen. If there's one message that's under open assault in this hour, it is the message of the blood. I mean, it's not politically correct anymore to preach on the blood. As a matter of fact, preachers are going as far as I had a preacher to tell me uh, just within the past couple of weeks that they had uh, picked up a book on church growth and how to grow the church and how to be more effective of impacting the community and getting people into your church. And he said when he picked up the book and he began to read it, he said that there were three don'ts in the book. There were a bunch of do's about what you should do, about how you should organize things and different things. But he said there were three don'ts that uh, were at the beginning of the book. And he said the man that was writing the book says if you want to build uh, uh, your own church, if you want to uh, enlarge your church he says there's three things that you can't preach against Uh, amen that you don't preach he said don't preach against sin don't say that Jesus is the only way uh, and do not preach on the blood amen don't preach against sin don't say Jesus is the only way and do not preach uh, on the blood listen folks uh, if I can't preach on those three things I don't want a mega church Amen. If I can't preach, amen, that, 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 that sin kills, that, uh, uh, that, that sin will destroy, that Jesus is the way out, uh, and that the blood of Jesus is the remedy for sin. Listen, if we remove uh, those three things from Christianity, Christianity is not Christianity. If we, those are the quintessential elements to everything that Christianity is without uh, repentance, without Christ, without the blood. Christianity is no longer Christianity. If there's a message uh, that's being censored in this hour, it's messages on the blood. But we, uh, as the church, we must stand and proclaim uh, louder than ever before that there's still power in the blood uh, of Jesus. Uh, that there is still power in uh, the blood. Listen, our, our world uh, is in chaos. Uh, uh, we are literally right before our very eyes watching a revolution uh, in the United States of America. There's some changes that are coming down the pike uh, that are long needed. Uh, and because of the changes that are coming, uh, there's unrest. People are, are, are rioting. I think if they would just go out and get a job, a lot of the rioting could stop. 
Amen. But that's just my two cents. That's not in notes this morning. Amen. But uh, uh, th- th- there's unrest. There- there- there's chaos. Uh, not just in the United States, but the world. Uh, uh, just uh, I'm not getting into all of that this morning. Uh, amen. But uh, the answer for chaos has always uh, been and always will be the gospel. Uh, the answer for utter chaos uh, is the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, amen. Because when the world uh, was in outer chaos right after uh, Jesus, Jesus came, died, resurrected, and ascended. Uh, the, the, the apostles, the disciples filled with the Holy Ghost. Uh, the Bible says that they turned their world upside down uh, for Jesus Christ. Uh, if we could do the same thing, uh, if we could turn our world upside down for Christ now, uh, it would be turned right side up. Uh, and then we could get things back going the way that it should go. Uh, but how does that happen? Uh, it happens when we go back and we stand upon the pillars of the gospel uh, and we understand compromisingly preach uh, the word of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, and the first pillar of that uh, is the blood of Jesus. Uh, the blood of Jesus. Uh, it still reaches to the highest mountain. Uh, it flows to the lowest valley. Uh, it's the blood that gives me strength from day to day. Uh, and the blood of Jesus church will never uh, lose its power. Uh, presidents rise uh, and presidents fall. Uh, but the blood of Jesus will endure to every generation. Uh, amen. Men come uh, and men fall but the blood of Jesus consistently flows the same I thank God this morning for the blood man the beauty of the blood I mean I want to look at a couple of things this morning and I may not be able to preach all of it but I I, I want to get as much knocked out as I can preaching on the blood of Jesus Jesus said himself in John 6 Verses 53 through 56, Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except ye eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink His blood, ye have no life in you. Whoso eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood hath eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood dwelleth in me, and I in him. Going back to the first part of verse 53. Except you eat of the flesh of the Son of Man and drink His blood, you have no life in you. Folks, if, if, if the life of the flesh, we know we'll get into it in just a moment, is in the blood. If that's where the life-giving component of Christianity comes, why would we want to be ashamed of that? Why would we want to silence that? Why would we try to diminish that? And try to uh, limit its power. Jesus himself said in our text. Except that you eat of my flesh and drink of my blood. You have no life in you. A life uh, originates in the blood. Man cannot have true life without experience the blood of Jesus. He may think that he has life. But he's fooling his own self. He may have all of the money in the world and living it up having a a house in the hills and having everything that he wants, but he does not know what true life is until he experiences the life of the blood of Jesus. Amen. Man can never have true life without experiencing this blood that I'm preaching to you about. This is a revolutionary message. Amen. What Jesus was saying here, what he was saying in John chapter 6, it absolutely turned the religious world upside down. It overturned their apple cart. And you could say, why is that? Because the, the, the Levitical law, the, the law of Moses, it forbid any individual from partaking of blood. They couldn't touch blood. They couldn't drink blood. They couldn't eat of blood. If the, if the meat wasn't well done and had blood coming out of it, uh, they would defile themselves and they would be unclean. They would be uh, uh, breakers of the law. They could have nothing to do uh, with blood. Uh, but Jesus here says, except you eat of my flesh uh, and drink of my blood, you have no life. Uh, and he says, if you uh, eat my flesh and drink of my blood, uh, you dwell in me and I in you. What Jesus was saying here was a direct uh, uh, it appeared to be a contradiction of the law uh, when, because Leviticus 17 says, And whoso, whatsoever man there be in the house of Israel or of the strangers that sojourn among you that eateth any manner of blood, I, this is God speaking, will set my face against the soul that eateth blood and will cut him off from among his people. For the life of the flesh is in the blood. 
And I have given it to you upon the altar to make an atonement for your souls. For it is the blood that maketh an atonement for the soul. Therefore I said unto the children of Israel, No soul of you shall eat blood. Neither shall any stranger that sojourneth among you eat blood. So when Jesus said in John 6, 53, Except you eat of the flesh of the Son of Man and drink His blood, you have no life in you. This threw the religious crowd into a frenzy. For this was an abomination. This went against their culture. It went against their grain. It went against everything that they thought to be true. It totally revolutionized the way that they saw things. Amen. Can I tell you that the message of the blood it still goes against the grain the message of the blood it still will revolutionize culture i mean if you go to a rank center on the street amen that one of these protesters is going absolutely crazy and and tell him you need to be washed to the blood you need to partake of the blood you're going to get the same look from them that jesus got in his day one of absolute bewilderment and shock one like what in the world are you talking about amen because the message of the blood it always goes against the grain of culture. It always goes against the spirit of the age and of the hour. But you hear this preacher this morning, I'd rather be on God's side than have this hell-filled culture any day of the week. I'd rather have the blood of Jesus. I would rather have my life marked by the blood, amen, than be, amen, esteemed in man's eyes and in popular and public opinion. Amen. It was revolutionary in Christ's day and the message is revolutionary in our day I mean just because we have some Judeo-Christian elements to our culture in this hour America has long passed by the Christian heritage and foundations that she was built upon and then the message of the blood is one that now is being scoffed at and now it is it goes against the grain of everything that we are in society to preach to teach, to tell somebody, hey, you need to be washed by the blood. You need to be born again. I mean, this life that you're living is utter foolishness, it's recklessness. Have an encounter with Christ. It was revolutionary then, it's revolutionary now. I mean, I want us to look for a few moments at the beauty of the blood. What's beautiful about blood? Blood, for some people, is a very disgusting thing. The sight of Blood for some people, they'll lose all oxygen. They'll hit the ground. Other people, they 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 just don't like it. As soon as uh, they have a little scrape or something, they're passing out. Blood is is not a beautiful thing to the eyes of flesh. But when we see the blood of Jesus through God's eyes, when we see the blood of Jesus through the eyes of the redeemed. When we see the blood of Jesus through the eyes that have been bought and purchased by that blood, oh, the blood is a very beautiful thing. I mean, the blood is a very beautiful thing. Why? Because the blood provides redemption for the redeemed. In the Word of God, the, the, the re- word redemption, it indicates the ideas of loosening from a bond, setting free from captivity or slavery, buying back something that was lost or sold and exchanging something in one's possession for something possessed by another. It means a ransom. The foundation of redemption, I want us to notice this morning, was instituted in the law. When Leviticus 24, verses 24 and 25, it says, and in all the land of your possession, you shall grant a redemption for the land. If thy brother be waxen poor and has sold away some of his possessions, and if any of his kin come to redeem it, then shall he redeem that which his brother sold. The first time that you see the principle of redemption is in Leviticus 24. This uh, was in relation to family land and family possessions, this was something that uh, was very valuable. It was not something to be taken lightly. But if one fell upon hard times and uh, he had some debts racked up that he couldn't pay, he could sell the family land. He could sell his possessions. He could sell whatever to just try to get by. But he knew that when he sold it, uh, that there was a provision for that. Uh, He knew that uh, uh, in the law it was instituted that if I were to sell 
my family's land and my family's possession, that the next kinsman redeemer could come and he could buy back that which I sold. He could come back and he could buy back the family land so uh, my next of kin would be able to come back and purchase that uh, which I had sold and and given away. Uh, Amen. We see the parallel here of what redemption means. Uh, The most valuable possession that man uh, has ever received uh, is the privilege of having a relationship with God the Father. Uh, The most valuable thing that man could ever have uh, is not millions of dollars. uh, It's not houses or land uh, but the most valuable possession that we can have uh, is a possession uh, of of the presence of God Uh, in the garden I want you to notice Adam sold away that relationship uh, in return for curiosity Uh, God had given him a command don't eat of the fruit uh, don't partake of it uh, but as the old saying goes curiosity killed the cat Uh, Adam uh, amen ate of the forbidden fruit Uh, he sold out his relationship with God uh, for mere curiosity Uh, Amen. But don't be hard on Adam because so many have sold out for much cheaper. So many have sold out for much cheaper sold relationships with God uh, for just a few moments of pleasure uh, or a few moments uh, uh, of self uh, gratification. Amen. Uh, because of that, Adam lost everything that he had. Uh, he lost his relationship with the Father. Uh, and because of this, Adam not only became a slave to sin, uh, amen, but all of the human race uh, was made sinners by him. For Romans 5 and 12 says, uh, Wherefore is by one man centered into the world and death by sin and so death has passed upon all men for all have sinned all have sinned I mean every one of us have an Adamic nature that must be dealt with I mean the, the, the same nature that Adam had the, the same curiosity that made Adam fall when he sold away his possession he sold away his, uh, his, his position with God it's the same spirit that deal that uh, is inside of every single human that has ever lived. If you don't believe me, I've got a precious little angel going almost two years old. What makes her pitch the fit that she pitches? She's got an damning nature. What 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 overturns your apple cart? When everything's going smooth and one little thing uh, uh, comes against you and flesh rises up, is that Adamic nature that has to be dealt with? I mean, what has uh, been the whole root, uh, amen, of the problem of sin in our land? Is that, uh, it's the nature. Not only uh, did Adam sin, but when Adam sinned, the Bible says that all sin uh, was passed on, death passed on to all men. Uh, amen, every one of us has uh, that Adamic nature that must be dealt with. If it's not dealt with, uh, if it's not eradicated, if it's not purged by the blood, uh, you hear me, that nature will overtake you. Uh, that nature will overwhelm you that nature will send your soul to hell amen it may not be popular preaching but you hear me this morning it is right preaching amen Adam he sold away everything that he had amen he gave away his possession he gave away his relationship with God amen but aren't you thankful there is a kinsman redeemer amen aren't you thankful that we have a kinsman redeemer because in the midst of it all in Genesis 3 and 15 after Adam fell amen God speaking he said I will put enmity between thee and the woman uh, and between thy seed and her seed uh, and it shall bruise thy head uh, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Uh, God said uh, that there is going to come one, the seed of woman, not the seed of man. Uh, Every one of us are the seed of our fathers. uh, But God said there's going to come one, the seed of a woman. Uh, He's not going to have any of Adam in him. Uh, He's not going to have a fallen nature. Uh, He's not going to have the ability to sin. Uh, Amen. He's not going to have corruption uh, in his seed. Uh, but He will come and He will bruise your head. That word bruise there in the Hebrew means to crush, to pulverize, or to annihilate. Can I tell you at the cross of Calvary, that is exactly what Jesus did. I mean, He bruised the head of Satan. He crushed the back of sin to where you and I, I mean, we can be redeemed by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. We don't have to die in sin and trespasses away from God, but we can can have freedom this morning uh, and freedom in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. From Adam throughout all the prophets, you hear me, there was no redemption provided for sin. The blood of bulls and goats, according to the Levitical law, it covered man's sin. But while it covered it, 
while it just provided uh, uh, just a covering for sin, it could not redeem man from their sin. There is a big difference between covering sin and redeeming sin. Amen. And that's all that happened in that Levitical law. Men's sins were covered. But men's sins were not removed. Amen. The only thing that they had throughout the Old Testament was the law and the promise. A law and the promise. A law that they could not, amen, hold up to. That in every instance, all they were were failures, failures, failures. All they had to hold on to was a law and a promise. That it's not always going to be this way. It may be this way right now. But there is a better day coming. And when Christ came, He was the embodiment of that promise fulfilled. Amen. When He came born of a virgin, He was the seed of woman. Never one time sinned. Never one time knew what it was like to sin or to be separate from the Father. Amen. Performed miracles, walked for 33 and a half years and was crucified. My God. Amen. Died, buried and rose again and ascended to the right hand of the Father. In doing those things, church, He provided our redemption. What Adam gave away in the garden Jesus restored at the cross of Calvary. He redeemed man back to himself. We don't have to live under the penalty of the law, but we can live, amen, under the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, knowing that our sins have been redeemed, knowing that our sins have been removed, knowing that our sins are gone. There's power in the redeeming qualities of the blood. Because of Christ, Because of the blood, sin lost its power over the child of God. Thank God for it. Paul writing to the church of Rome in Romans 6, verses 12 through 14, he said, Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that you should obey it in the lust thereof. Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead, as members of righteousness unto God. I love this in verse 14. For sin shall not have dominion over you. I mean, in other words, sin will not have power over you. Sin will not have authority over you. Sin will not have uh, the deciding word over you. Uh, sin is not going to have uh, uh, the, 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 the final thing of authority in your life. Uh, amen. Aren't you thankful for the blood this morning, church? Uh, amen. Sin does not have to have authority over us. Uh, the whole world uh, may be given over to sin, uh, but you and I don't have to be sinners. Uh, amen. The whole world, uh, amen, may ha- have sin. Uh, amen. Oars and, uh, oozing and coursing through their veins, uh, but you and I uh, can be washed. Uh, and purchased and redeemed by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And when that happens, the Word of God says, Sin shall not have dominion over you. We're no longer, amen, under the dominion or under the authority of sin. But when we're redeemed, we're under the authority and the Lordship of Christ. Amen. We're under His authority. The world is a picture of sin. Amen. Picture a slave at the slave block, at the auction block of sin. Amen. Chained and shackled. Amen. Going out uh, to the highest bidder. uh, Going out to whoever will pay the most. uh, Going out to who will ever give the highest price. uh, Amen. But there is a man by the name of the Lord Jesus Christ uh, that shows up uh, at the auction block of sin. uh, My God. uh, And says, here, uh, I paid his price. Uh, I purchased his debt. Uh, No longer is he going to be a slave to sin. Uh, He is going to be uh, a child uh, of the one true God. Uh, Amen. Thank God for the redeeming aspects of the blood the blood the blood the blood it's the blood that redeems men from sin with one royal drop of blood men's redemption was purchased heard a man say one time that Jesus his body was pulverized all of those drops of blood came out. Blood was everywhere. Because he knew that there was a lot of sin. And that therefore Jesus had to shed a lot of blood. Nope. I can tell you. All it took was one drop. All it took was one drop. Amen. Jesus did die 
a very pulverizing death or blood. It was a very bloody and very gory scene. Isaiah said his visage was marred more than any man, his appearance. When people looked at the cross, they didn't say, who is that? But they said, what is that? What is that hanging there? That doesn't even look like a mere man. But all it took was one drop of that blood that purchased our redemption, that set men free from the, from the penalty of death. Amen. Because of that, I want us to look this morning. There is no redemption outside of the blood of Jesus. None. None. I don't care what Oprah tells you. I don't care what Dr. Field has to say. I don't care what this coexist movement. You may not have caught on to it, but you're riding down the road and you look beside you and it's growing in prevalence. You see the sign that says coexist and it has all of these religious signs. I mean, I can tell you that's a movement birthed by hell. Amen. Saying that the, that the Jews, that the Muslim, that the Hindus, that the Buddhists, that the, uh, the Christians, that the Scientologists, uh, we're all on the same path together. We've all uh, got to coexist together because we're all going to the same place. Uh, I can tell you that's hogwash. Uh, because unless you've been washed by the blood, uh, you're doomed for hell. Uh, amen. Unless you've been touched by the blood, uh, unless your sins uh, have been purged uh, and your black heart uh, has been touched by red blood uh, and it's made whiter than snow, uh, I'm not going to coexist with them. I've been born from above. Amen. This world is not my home. I'm a stranger and I'm a pilgrim passing through. I am unashamedly preaching this morning that there is no redemption outside of the blood. I don't care how intellectual a man may try to get and try to revolutionize the message. Amen. This gospel doesn't need any revolution. It just needs men and women to stand flat-footed and proclaim, Thus saith the word. Jesus has been relevant for every generation and Jesus will be relevant in every generation. His blood is our only hope. There is no redemption outside of the blood of Jesus. Sorry Tom Cruise. Scientology is not the way. Amen. Sorry ISIS. Islam is not the way. Sorry Buddhist monk, I love you. But I love you enough to tell you the truth. Jesus is the only way. There is no redemption outside of the blood of Jesus. 1 Timothy 1, 2 and 6, For there is one God, one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus, who gave Himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. Ephesians 1 and 7, In whom we have redemption through His blood. The forgiveness of sins according to the riches of His grace. Romans 3, for all have sinned. Very familiar passage of Scripture. Come short of the glory of God. Being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Whom God has set forth to be the propitiation through faith in His blood. To declare the righteousness for the remission of sins that are passed through the forbearance of God. Folks, Jesus is the only way. Jesus said, I am the door. Any man that tries to come in to the sheepfold another way, the same as a thief and a robber. What does a thief and a robber do? They try to get in somewhere that they're not welcomed. They try to find a back door. They try to find a loophole. They try to find and sneak their way in. You can't sneak your way into heaven. Amen. No, there's only... One class of people that are making it to heaven. It's not rich. It's not famous. It's not black. It's not white. It has nothing to do with the skin color, pedigree. No. Amen. If you make it to heaven, you're going to make it because you're red and you've been washed by the blood. Amen. There's only one group that's going to make it. Jesus is the only way. For the slave of sin, Jesus has paid our price. He's bought us. He's redeemed us. When you pray owed a price, when you owed a debt that you couldn't pay, Jesus paid a debt that He didn't owe. Amen. Purchased us. Redeemed us. Amen. To where now I'm His and He is mine. Thank God for it this morning. There is no other way, folks, for redemption outside of the blood. Amen. For the past couple of times that I preach, it just seems like God has gotten me going back 
to the elements, to the foundations, to the simplicity of the gospel. Amen. Because it's the gospel that works. The gospel that works. Redemption and no other. We think that we can work our way into heaven. No. We think that we can buy our way into heaven. No. You think good deeds will go into heaven and get you into heaven? No. You've got to go by the blood. You've got to be born again. I mean, Jesus, unless you be born again, you cannot enter into the kingdom of heaven. Not if you uh, work good works. No good works will follow you after you're saved. Uh, but you've got to be saved first. Uh, you've got to be born again. And then when you're born again and washed by His blood, uh, good works will take care uh, of themselves. Uh, it's Jesus' blood and His blood alone that provides redemption. Uh, and I want you to look briefly. It's the blood plus nothing that provides redemption. I know, I know there's movement out there and, and I may get in trouble this morning. Amen. But it's not the blood plus water baptism that saves you. If water could save any man, then a murdering, drug addict, alcoholic could go down to the beach and dunk, come out, and it'd be saved. But you hear me. It don't matter how many times he puts himself under that water. Until he has an encounter with the blood, the water does no good. Amen. Do I believe in water baptism? Absolutely. Do I believe that if a man is saved, he ought to be water baptized? Absolutely. But you hear me, you can't get the cart ahead of the ox. Amen. Water baptism does not save you. Amen. It's the blood and the blood alone that saves man's sin. Amen. Because if water baptism saved you, then why did Jesus have to come and shed His blood? If redemption was provided by water, don't you think He could have took all the people and dunked them in water and then be saved? But no, it's the blood. Uh, and it's the blood of loan. Uh, and, and you hear me? I'm going to dive a little bit deeper. Uh, amen. Tongues can't even save you. Amen. There's some movements that say, well, you got to be baptized in water before you can be saved. And then there's some movements that says before you can be baptized in water, you got to speak in tongues because that's the evidence of salvation. No. Amen. No, no, no. It's salvation. The, 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 it's the blood and the blood alone that equals salvation. Amen. Those are things that should happen. Those are things that will happen as you progress on this journey. But every race has a starting point. Every journey has a place. Where men start. Uh, and I can tell you the starting point uh, is being born again uh, and washed by the blood. Uh, baptism can't save you. Tongues can't save you. It's the blood. Uh, and it's the blood alone uh, that sets men free. Uh, it's the blood. Uh, and the blood alone. Uh, we must proclaim the power uh, that's in the blood. God help us this morning. I've been in some places. God help. I told you I was going to get in trouble this morning. Hey man, I've been in some places that like to think that they were higher on the ecclesiastical ladder than others. To where a rank sinner comes in that's never been to church. That don't look right. That don't dress right. That don't act right because they don't know any better. And before they come down to the altar, they're trying to throw this on them. Throw that on them. Hey man, trying to conform them to what they are before they even pray through. I mean, I can tell you, that's just as damaging. Amen. That, that, that's just as damaging as anything. Do I believe in biblical standards? Absolutely. Do I believe that when God changes your heart, uh, He's going to change the outside? Absolutely. Uh, amen. I believe that an immodest man, when he's born again, uh, he's going to become modest. Uh, I believe when, a, uh, when an immodest woman, uh, amen, uh, comes down and gets born again, uh, she's going to be modest, mom, because God's going to change that nature. Uh, but you hear me, it's not our place uh, to throw things on them before they ever pray through. Uh, let God do the work. Uh, amen. It's not man's standards that equal salvation. Uh, I've seen a lot of dangerous Christians get to the place uh, where they put more stock in a standard uh, than they do. Uh, amen. In the blood of Jesus. Uh, let the blood of Jesus do His work. Uh, Jesus knows better than we do. Uh, the Holy Ghost uh, knows better than we do. Uh, when we allow Him to do the work, uh, He'll give fruit uh, and that fruit will remain. Uh, it's the blood uh, and the blood of loan that provides redemption uh, for sin. Uh, let the blood have its work. 
Everything that I just preached to you is very important to the Christian faith. Water baptism is important. Speaking, being filled with the Spirit, speaking in tongues is important. I mean, good Christian standards are important. Amen. And all of those things have got, got to be added. But when you put more stock in those things than you do the element. When you put more stock in those than you, than you do being born again. Amen, folks. We're on dangerous ground. Go back to just preaching. Amen. The simplicity of the gospel. Amen. It's the blood. Let the blood have its work. Let the blood claim us. Let the blood redeem us. Uh, amen. And when we try to add things to the blood, you hear me? The Lord laid this thought on my heart. If you try to add anything to the blood, you're looking at Jesus and saying the blood isn't good enough. If we didn't try to add anything to the flesh, I'll never forget Brother Talbert saying, preached a, uh, preached a message one time in the Philippines that a man come to him and was preaching to be saved. You've got to have the blood of Jesus and you've got to drink a little drink that's only found in the Philippines called Julu juice. You've got to put your faith in the blood. And you've got to put your faith in the Julu juice. Well, if that's the case, then only a small number of Filipinos are going to heaven. Jesus said in the, uh, in the book of Revelation that out of every nation, out of every kindred, out of every tongue are going to appear on that day. So that nixes that theory, right? Hey, man, there, there's nothing to that. I mean, but what men have always tried to enhance the blood of Jesus. Listen, you can't enhance the blood. You can't. It's the only pure thing in an impure world. I've got to hurry. I mean, the blood provides redemption. Secondly, the blood provides purification. Jesus gave the command for the church to be pure. He said in James 4 verse 8, Draw nigh to God. He will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners. And purify your hearts, you double-minded. The command is there for the church to be pure. But the age-old question remains, how do I become pure? If there's one problem, man, I'm t- I don't know why I'm getting myself in trouble this morning. But can I tell you one problem in the church in the 21st century? We know the answers. But we don't know how to deliver the answers. We can quote scriptures. But we can't tell them the why behind the scripture. We, we, we can tell them, you can't do this, you can't do that, you got to do this. But, but why? And when they ask that one little three letter word, why or how? Most people fold like a deck of cards. Because they've been taught what to believe. But they haven't been taught why they believe it. So, the commandment is there. How? You must be pure. But how can I be pure? Jesus says, you've got to be purified, you double-minded. But how? How do I become pure? Listen, it's the same answer that I've been preaching about for the past 30 minutes. The blood. You see, in your body, you have a natural detoxifying agent called the blood. If there is a bacteria in your body that should not be there that, that's harmful, if there's some something growing, if there's some pathogen, if there's some infection or something that's there, your blood is constantly flowing and coursing through your body. And in the course of that journey, as it's cycling through, you have filters, the liver, the spleen, and then you have uh, kidneys, different things that will push those pathogens out that are push, uh, those infections out a lot of times. There may be uh, infections that are there that's great and it takes it a while. Uh, but the blood uh, is a natural cleansing agent. Uh, the, 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 the blood, uh, as it cycles through, as it's cycling through your body, uh, without you even knowing it, I don't have to tell my blood to cycle out things that should not be there. No, uh, it does it automatically. Uh, as I'm living, as I'm breathing, the blood uh, is constantly working, constantly pumping, uh, right? I mean, pushing out 
things that should not be there. And given nutrients and oxygen to fuel the things that should be there. Amen. The blood is the natural detoxifying agent. What is it that will detox a body from sin? It's the blood. What is it that will remove the pathogen of sin from the body? It's the blood. What is it that will remove the infection from sin out of the limbs of the body? It's the blood. It's the blood. It's the blood. My God. It's the blood that will purify the soul of the wicked. It's the blood that sets men free. It's the blood that pushes out everything that isn't shouldn't be there. And it's the blood that renews everything that should be. It's the blood and the blood alone. Listen. Hebrews 9. I'm hurrying. But Christ being common high priest of good things to come by greater and a more perfect tabernacle not made with hands. That is to say this building. That's what we preached last week. Neither by, by the blood of goats and calves but by His own blood entered into the holy place having attained eternal de- redemption for us. For thousands of years since the institution of the law when a high priest was to present himself before God he had to bring the, bu- the blood of a bull or a goat. He had to bring the blood to present it. Notice what Paul, or, or notice what the writer of Hebrews says. Neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood entered he into the holy place. My God, I feel him this morning. Amen. Having obtained eternal redemption for us. For if the blood of bulls and of goats and the ashes of an heifer sprinkling the unclean sanctify to the purifying of the flesh, how much more shall the blood of Jesus Christ, whom through the eternal Spirit offered Himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God? The blood of Jesus will purge uh, your conscience from dead works uh, to serve the living God. Uh, What is it that makes a carnal man spiritual? Uh, It starts with the blood. Uh, What is it that makes a man think thoughts of perversion? Uh, To think thoughts of holy things, folks, it's the blood uh, that purges uh, our conscience from dead works, from death uh, unto life. Uh, You can't pass from death to life uh, except you pass by the blood. (coughs) But Titus 2 for the grace of God to bring us salvation appeared to all men, teaching us that we should deny ungodliness and worldly lust, and we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world, looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior Jesus Christ, who hath, listen, who hath, who gave himself that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people. Zealous of good works. So in Titus 2, again, we see the command that you should deny ungodliness, worldly lust, live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. How? How do I do that, preacher? I've tried on my own and I can't. I can't, I can't, I can't. You have the answer right there. Amen. In verse 14, Jesus Christ gave unto us Himself that He might not only redeem us from all iniquity, but purify unto Himself a peculiar people. It's the blood, folks. It all starts with the blood. We can't limit it. We can't just put it on the back burner. It must be the forefront of everything that we are. The life of the flesh is in the blood and then everything of Christianity it all flows out of this common principle and this common vein it starts it is and it ends with the blood of Jesus you can major on minors a lot of people have done that but if you take all the weight on a wagon wheel that's supposed to be on that axle and you put all of the weight on one of those spokes in the wagon wheel, you're going to be broke down on the side of the road. If you ever distribute the weight from where it's supposed to be, and you put it on another area where it's not, where it's meant to be a support, it's meant to, 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 to build up. If you ever take the emphasis off of the place where it should be and put it where it's not, you're going to be broke down on the side of the road. Amen. The blood. When we're born again, We can announce to the world that we have been cleansed. Jesus not only came to redeem, but Jesus came to cleanse. 
He never leaves a man like he finds him. Never. Ever. Ever. Amen. Never leaves a man like he finds him. Amen. We can announce to the world that when we're touched by the blood, we're redeemed and we're cleansed. I'm not the man that I used to be. My God. I used to have things in my mind and my body and my heart that wasn't right. That wasn't pure. But thanks be unto God for the blood. Thanks be unto God for the blood that not only redeemed me, that paid my penalty, that paid my price, but He cleansed me. We can sing that song, There's nothing too dirty that He can't make worthy. You've washed me in mercy and I am clean. Preacher, how do I get clean? It's the blood. To the alcoholic and Alcoholics Anonymous that's doing everything that they can to try to get clean. But man's wisdom is failing them. Man's programs are failing them. They want to get clean, but they can't. Preacher, what do I do? Uh, Get born again. Uh, Let the blood uh, be applied to your life. Uh, Jesus will do what alcohol anonymous can't. Uh, He'll do what counselors can't. Uh, He'll do what professionals can't. Uh, He is the great counselor. Uh, He is uh, our great and mighty high priest. Uh, And His blood uh, still covers a multitude of sin. Uh, And His blood uh, not only will redeem you from sin, uh, He'll clean you up from that sin. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When Jesus redeems that man, He cleans that man. He purifies that man, even as He is pure. Amen. He doesn't leave them stained with the elements of sin. Listen, a man, an alcoholic, he can get to the place. Amen. When his life's been touched by the blood, to where that alcohol that's bound him for years, amen, he don't desire it anymore. The druggie will lay the pipe down for the last time. The prostitute will find a new line of work. The liar will begin to tell the truth. The smoker that's been trying for years to break it, the addiction he can't, he'll find that the blood of Jesus is the greatest addiction breaker that this world knows anything about. My God, folks, there's power in the gospel this morning. I feel the power, amen, of the Holy Ghost and the power of the blood this morning. Because Christ is pure, He will bring purity to His church. Purity to His church. Come help me, Kirsten, I'm done. I got through the introduction this morning and that's about it. Amen. It may be a good thing, Brother Eddie's going to be out so much I can finish it up. Amen. Oh, God, the blood, the blood. Folks, we can't overemphasize the importance of the blood. We can't. We can't. Many people are trying to push it aside. And it, it saddens me to say in my heart, a preacher that I have the utmost confidence in was going through his ordination process. With his denomination. And it's sad to say that his denomination is the same as my denomination. While they were talking about different things, the teacher of the ordination class had the audacity to stand up and tell those group of ministers that was there. He said, folks, he said, the old rugged cross ain't going to cut it anymore. He said, times of changing. And we've got to change with it to meet the needs of this generation. It wouldn't have done for Brother Cord to have been in that class that day. Amen. Because I can tell you, I don't know that I could have sat there and listened to that. But that's the prevailing voice of this hour. It's a plot from the pit of hell to try to diminish the power of the blood of Jesus. To try to diminish, to try to make it of non effect. Listen, I can cut myself and bleed out this morning, and my blood will have absolutely no effect on anybody's life. But when Jesus was crucified, when his body was crushed so that ours could be made whole, when he was there at the whipping post, he was there with you and my, you and me in mind. And His blood 
it changed the course of all of human history. I thank God for the power that's in that blood. Amen. I'm not going to try to diminish it. I'm going to embrace it. I'm going to embrace it and say, wash me over again, oh God. If there's anything that's in me that should not be, God, could your blood purge it out? God, could you make me pure even as you were pure? God, I thank you for redeeming me, but the blood that I want to get to, folks, is a progressive work. It's a progressive work. We'll touch on it maybe tonight. Finish it up. But it starts with redemption. Redeeming us, purging us from the auction block of sin. And then takes that man or woman that he's purchased and he begins to clean them up. And can I tell you something? That cleaning up process is not just a one day thing. Amen. God saved me. God cleaned me when I was born again. But can I tell you, He daily works on Corey. Can I tell you, daily, He cleans daily. The Holy Ghost convicts my heart. There's things that you can do to be more like me. Amen. Don't reject the cleansing of God. The progressive work, we'll get into it more. But I'm, I'm stopping right here. If you're here and you're lost this morning, the blood, Jesus has come to redeem you, to purchase you back. If you're here and you're battling things that you know isn't right. You know there's things in your mind that's that, that, that's clouding your thought process, that's hindering your walk with God. I can tell you it's not of God. God is light, and in Him is no darkness at all. Amen. God is light. It's His will for the light of Christ to shine. Amen. Past the darkness of self. Amen. This morning He can clean. He can cleanse and make you new. Amen. Could we stand all over the building this morning? Father, I love you.